Welcome back to another episode of the Cobra Daytona Bill. In this episode, I'm going to try to get the clutch switch for the Coyote in. And I've got a situation here that uh, hopefully I've not made a massive mistake. So we're going to find out together. So come join along. So as you can see, I have mounted the clutch reservoir into the pan. Uh, this is actually the driver's side back. Um, I've mounted this into the area here underneath this cover because I figured it'll match the two brake ones and it kind of cleans it all up, makes it look very nice. But here's my situation. This clutch switch needs to go down into there, pick up those two bolts. I have just received this, uh, the clutch switch, I've actually got to mount it to the plate. Uh, just received it about 20 minutes ago, UPS. So if it doesn't fit down in there, I'm screwed. But let's see. Oh, I think I'm going to be okay. So this is where the clutch switch goes, and I think then there's another bracket that ties into here that's got a big loop. So when this thing gets pushed back, um, it pulls onto the switch and then tells the Coyote the clutch is installed, uh, pushed in and you can now fire up. Without that, the Coyote won't start. It's basically a neutral switch, but it's a clutch switch, bottom, bottom lower clutch switch. So it looks like I'm gonna have the room to make this thing work, which is a great thing. So I'm probably gonna install this part first, uh, because that way I'm not kind of fighting in the way of the, the switch. See, I have more room in there to get the other piece, which let me go grab that. Um, the other piece, piece is this assembly right here. It's back on my hat, sorry about that. The other piece is this assembly right here, which I really don't have any instructions with this. And I think this is going to go in here like that. So, and then this way, as the clutch comes back, this goes this way. Let me make sure you, ah, sorry. Uh, this is going to go in here like this. And then when the clutch goes back, this goes this way. And tell the coyote that, yeah, the clutch is pushed in. You go ahead to start. So I'm going to have to unthread this. Uh, this is going to go back behind that. And then we'll bolt in the other switch. I might bolt the other switch. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, I'm not sure which one I'm going to do first. But follow along. As I said, this should be a pretty short video. Uh, but I'm just glad this is going to fit up in there. And I'm thinking that's the direction it's supposed to go. But it might be... I might have to flip this. No, nope, that's the right way. So, yeah. So we're golden. Uh, that's good news because I was kind of worried after seeing that, uh, that cylinder there at Reservoir going, ooh, I don't know if that's going to make it. It's going to be close. It's still going to be very tight in here, don't get me wrong. Um, but I think we'll be able to get the wires up back into here to get to this switch. And uh, this is going to be awesome. I mean, this is, I don't know if anybody's ever done the Reservoir in this location. Um, but yeah, you know, so I'm gonna put a little sealant like a little rubber weather strip around here to keep the air from getting down inside there But other than that's not gonna get any weather um, But this is gonna be awesome. I mean, it's out of the way Fuse panel goes here. Um, I've even saw a guy He mounted a fuse panel this way and you get to it from in here You got to pull the cover off so that way you're not up underneath. I might do that too. might copy that one So we'll see but follow along Okay, so we're gonna take this uh, threaded rod now. We're gonna unscrew it from here So I'm gonna take this plate, which when I built the uh, when I built the Roadster, they didn't have this, so I had to make my own. Um, you know, they're really set up for the cable clutches, but you know, I'm, I ran hydraulic in both, and so this is important. I actually made mine last time, or I couldn't find this. I don't know, but this time it came with the Coyote install kit, which I just ordered a week and a half ago and just received, because there's a lot of fittings in there and things that I it's just easier than try to I'll go out and source them. So this. It's gonna go up into here like so. Hopefully you can see down in there. Like that. Um, and then we'll redo this onto that. I'm gonna have to, uh, yeah, I'm a little too tight, and that thing's not gonna go in there. So I, I gotta loosen this up more so I get a little more free play in this. We won't show you that. So the bracket is now, um, it's in here, so as you can see it. Uh, so now what I gotta do is I just need to continue to thread this into this clevis, and then we'll mount the uh, lower bracket onto there, and this will sit up into here like this. 
So a uh, pretty slick setup, uh, simple, easy. So I'll continue to thread this in to that. It's a slow process. I said, you just gotta kinda slowly just keep turning this thing. and It just takes time. Not a whole lot of room, but uh, I'll continue to thread that in until I get the clutch pedal the height I want, and then I'll bolt that down. So we'll show you that in a few seconds, but I'm not gonna make you watch uh, me doing this. Okay, so we got the shaft here. Um, it's all back down to where it should be. I just kind of snugged up the jam nut. Uh, so now I can get this down into here. And this is adjustable, as you can see the things are slotted. So what I'll do is I'll put a, a meter onto here and make this switch. So it just, uh, I don't know if it completes the circuit, interrupts it, I don't remember, it's been so long. But uh, then I can adjust this where it needs to go. So we're going to, uh, Push up the nut, the bolts from the bottom. Oh. Well, screw that one up. And then we'll drop these back down in here. Oh, messed that one up. Well, two for two today, huh? Oh, where's the other one at? Okay, let's try this one more time. Two for two. It's a tight fit. Uh-oh, these bolts don't go, th oh, they do go through there. Oh, you know what, let's try it this way. Let's do it this way, how does that sound? See, it works smarter, not harder. You know. There we go. So you can see how that's gonna work now, and then I can slide this back to wherever I need to go. So I can slide this either way to get the adjustment to where when that clutch is pushed, um, you know, I would say three quarters of the way down uh, before it you know, either engages or disengages the switch. Um, so we'll just tighten this down kind of right here right now. Uh, Cause I don't know exactly how this whole thing's gonna line up and then we can always adjust it later. So that's pretty much it. So here's the clutch action on the switch, as you can see. And the clutch actually engages, you see the little, Hopefully you can see that on the little gray right here, see the little teeth right here? Well, I just, I just put a meter up there for continuity. And as soon as those little teeth clear into the black housing, that's when the alarm goes off. So right about there. And the clutch is almost to the floor at that point. I could probably move the switch in a little bit, but I'm thinking that's probably plenty. Your foot's gonna be, you know, two thirds of the way down probably before it disengages. Which should be plenty. So, uh, switch goes into here. We'll run it back behind here and out. And as you can see now, everything fits in there quite nicely. So, cover goes back on. Try not to scratch anything. I'm gonna throw a couple screws in there to keep it secure. And uh, that's it. That is the Coyote uh, lower clutch lockout switch, I guess you call it. Um, I don't know. There used to be an upper and a lower, but I think with this control pack, I know they did away with the uh, upper a while ago. Maybe first Gen 1 Coyote? I'm not sure. I know that my Gen 2 did not have it. I just needed the one switch to make it start, and that was it. So thanks again for watching, and uh, please hit subscribe. And looking forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you.